Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we have ASAP Ferg value. I'm pretty sure this music video came out a couple of days ago and I'm also pretty sure that this was edited by a collaboration of a few different people. So I'm going to find their names and leave their information, their Instagram links in the description. I also want to mention we're going to be doing an editing competition. I'm going to be recording that after this video. So stay tuned for that. If you're interested, make sure you turn on the channel notifications down below so that you don't miss out on the details of it. But anyways, let's go ahead and get right into this. Let's check it out. And if you guys are new here, we're going to to talk about the editing of this hop into Adobe Premiere and After Effects and show you exactly how you can create some of this yourself so starting off the first thing that really stood out to me you can really see that it's a collaboration of many different people because there's a lot of different styles in terms of the editing being shown here there's a lot of different mediums there's VHS footage there's masking there's photos there's a lot of different things going on throughout so we'll go through here and as I see some things I'll point them out so what you're seeing on the screen here we have data moshing we've talked about on the channel a lot um, there's also a mix of some VHS footage which we're going to talk about as well and then getting into here you can see some of the mix of styles you have some of these frames here where you can tell they could have printed this out on a printer customized it kind of carved in some words some lyrics in here and we'll play through we have some cool little masking clones in the background and as we scroll through we're not going to stay too long on the actual breakdown but I just want to give you guys a good feel of what it is we're going to be teaching for when we do pop in so here's some more examples of some of the creative things a lot of photos a lot of photo manipulation work here um, so we'll use Photoshop we're going to use Premiere, a lot of the Adobe products to be able to create something like this. And better yet, the thing I want to really get across is how you can use some of these techniques, blend your own creativity into it to create custom things. I don't want to show you how you can just recreate exactly what they're showing. I want to show you how you can take the process of what they are doing to achieve it. And you can take that process and apply it in different ways for your own project. So here's another cool one, this kind of popping out mouth effect, some more interesting data moshing, uh, mixing drone shots. There's some inverts going on and I'm playing this without the audio. So there's no copyright issues. But again, the number one thing I try and talk about is editing to the music is very, very important, especially near this later part to get the video to flow properly. You need to be editing to the music. So we'll talk about some of these interesting techniques, something like this, some kind of freeze frame manipulation type things. And again, some more of that sort of lone wolf hand-drawn style. We'll talk about how you can create some hand-drawn looking effects. There again, the data moshing mixed in with this uh, drone clip. Super cool, some turbulent stuff. So enough talking about the breakdown. You guys get the gist. Let's hop into Adobe Premiere. So what I'm doing right now, I went onto pexels.com and I'm grabbing some stock footage. I just looked up gold teeth so that I can get some stuff to mask with. But again, if you're planning on doing this for a music video or any other type of video, it's good to have a photographer on set or just take pictures in general on set if you do want to create this sort of style where you mix pictures. And of course, it's great because you can use those pictures as Instagram content for the artist, plus you can incorporate it into the video. So I dropped my photo into Adobe Premiere. I'm going to go ahead and just extend that a bit so we can see it. It's also a little bit too big so let's right click on it and go to scale to frame size so that we can actually see it full length it's in vertical but it's fine because we're going to use these masking techniques that i'm about to show you to create these little pop edits so if we select our clip we go up to effect controls you'll see under opacity you have these little masking tools we can grab this little four point polygon mask and just drag this out around the mouth here now you see if i click away it's kind of a feathered edge here if we just select that again go to our effect controls You'll see our mask feather under opacity under the mask we created. We can lower that if you want it to have a real kind of cut out look. So I have this little clip here where we can overlay that little mask clip that we just created over top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause it as soon as that hits that exact point. So right here. And at that point, I want to bring this clip in of the mouth. And again, I'm just kind of mixing and matching shots. But if you just click on motion here, you can rescale this down. And again, make sure you change the rotation, try and match that. I'll have this sort of freeze frame match cut that I made an entire video on before. So if you want to see more just about this specific effect, you can. Of course, if you'd like, you can right click on this bottom part and freeze frame this as well. So I go to add frame hold. If we play this, it'll pause right at that moment. And then, of course, you could just cut, make a transition. So it's a good way to add some sort of pop in effects before you transition to the next part of the song. But let's go a little bit further into this and show you some effects that were used in the music video that can play off of this a little bit more and just make it a little more interesting. So one of the main ones that I saw there is adding some sort of turbulent displace onto the parts of the pictures that are being masked over your subject. So if we go to our effects and presets here, turbulent displace effect and drop that onto your clip. And now in our effect controls, you're going to see it gets a little bit distorted. You can pop over here to where it says turbulent displacement and you can bump up this value just to kind of make some crazy looking stuff like this. Now, say we want to do some animation work here so that it kind of distorts and then pops away. 
So we have the clip, pauses with the freeze frames we created, select it, maybe start at the beginning of this clip here, and then in the effect controls, you can tailor the look that you want. So let's maybe just keyframe all of these little stopwatches drag to the end here and we're going to just kind of change around some of these sliders to see what we can actually create since we've created the keyframes here you see these popping up we can drag them to the end what we're really doing is if i play through you're going to see it if i play through you're going to see all this crazy movement and this is happening super quick because we cranked a lot of these values up if you want it to be a little bit more calm we can maybe delete those keyframes and just maybe change it a tiny bit so it just kind of stretches out that way you have a more kind of calm stretch out before you transition into the next clip. So I'll make that full screen as you can see. So pretty cool. There's another thing that I want to mention. Say we actually go to the effect controls here and select this turbulent displace. Let's click control C to copy it and then just delete it. So now we have no effect on here, but if you right click on this clip here and you actually nest it, now what we can do is we can just select it, paste it into the effect controls again. And now you're going to see that it, it's a completely different effect. Instead of taking the one little mask part that we created and distorting in that area, now what we did is we nested it. So we're telling the software that this isn't a masked area. This is its own clip in of itself. So now you can distort it and kind of make this little square bend in complete different direction. So that goes to show what you can do with nesting. Now that we have it nested, let's do this distort ripple that we have here and we'll drag the keyframes to the end. And now we have something like that. So that's pretty cool. So to give you that example of what we just did to the music video and how they used it, as you can see, they used that turbulent displace on the text here. So the exact same thing, just adding a little animated turbulent displace onto the font. And then again, using that mask onto the teeth. And then again, you'll see here, they kind of add a little bit of pixelation and some turbulent just to kind of mash it all up and all very quick, all very pop in to transition you to the next one. And again, keep in mind that what you're doing is you're just directing the viewer's attention to that spot. I talked about how those were a little bit pixelated. Let's talk about that because it can also segue us into the next effect. If you want to pixelate this here, you want to search up a little mosaic effect under your effects and presets. Let's drag down and so you can use this to stylize. If we go to our effect controls, bump up the blocks, you'll see we now have it pixelated. And if, like the other one, you can always go to the beginning here, keyframe to animate it, we'll drag a bit and maybe lower this so it's a little more pixelated. And you'll see that's what we've created. So pretty interesting. And you can also use this mosaic to censor people's faces. And you saw that a lot throughout the music video. So I'll click C on my keyboard and just make a cut a little bit before the pop in effect. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select these bottom parts. So this is just the normal footage, right click and nest them. And then I'll drop the mosaic again. And using that same masking technique to mask out somebody's teeth, we'll just place this maybe over the eyes, over the face, whatever you want to do with it. And maybe let's just keyframe these and kind of change them up. So there's like a little bit of movement. So there you guys go, just adding a little bit more flair and customization onto those pop in effects. And you don't just have to use turbulent displace, you can do anything. There's so many different effects in here. There's so many different presets that you can apply to that technique. So here's another little example of that. What we did here is you have the pop in freeze frame, and this is just a freeze frame of the exact footage you're seeing. They're just taking the point where you want to direct the viewer duplicating it and adding some special little effects onto there just to make it flash. And they even keep that up to transition it into the next scene. So we have this photo here, but again, you can do it with real life footage. We're just going to hold down alt, click and drag that up to duplicate it. And then we're going to go and create that mask. So let's select it up in our effect controls. You see opacity, just create this little square mask. Let's maybe put it over this ring here. And now we can lower the feather on it. And if we hide the bottom layer, you're going to see just this cutout ring. So let's go ahead and apply effects onto it. Red Giant Universe has a lot of cool sparkly glow plugins like that. Cheaper alternative, I have Adobe presets on my website if you're interested, where you can make glows, flickers, things like that, a lot of different color changes, and just kind of resize it here. You can make it super big if you would like. So it kind of starts, pops out, pops out, and then Control K to cut. And you can use that to transition as well. Say you want it to transition from here and have it start maybe at the before scene. Now it'll pop in so now it'll pop in first right here and then pop in the normal scene so popping back into the music video here there's something that i want to point out to you guys and i want to make clear because because a lot of people dm me asking the question how do i get this vhs look on my footage there's a lot of vhs things to do in adobe Premiere, in adobe premiere and adobe after effects if you want the best looking vhs possible effect 
the best solution is to shoot it on an actual VHS camera. The only alternative to actually shooting it on your own VHS camera, getting the authentic look and converting it to video file format, which you can edit, is to have normal footage. So you have your normal footage, you have a CRT TV, which is the old type of big blocky TVs that people used to have in the early 2000s. You take your footage, you burn it onto some sort of DVD, and you put that DVD into a DVD player and play it on the TV. It's an annoying process, but you can still replicate something like this by putting it on a CRT TV. And then you may be wondering, how do I get it from the CRT TV back into my editing software? Well, you can just set your camera up on a tripod and shoot the footage of the CRT screen. So that's how I do it. And then of course you take the footage out of that camera and into your editing software. So it is possible there are workarounds. Obviously this method requires a lot of gear because you need to get the CRT TV, you need to get a DVD player, get something to burn the video files onto a DVD. Again, if you wanna have this authentic looking VHS style, th those are your main two options. If you wanna add your own little VHS look, just search for VHS tutorial. There's millions of them on YouTube. It's one of the first things a lot of you probably learn. So let's go over to this section here and we can talk about some of this cool stuff in the shop because there's a lot going on. So, so I talked about using a CRT TV, recording it, same fashion for this. If you want to create this sort of printout paper look, of course you can use Photoshop and we're going to get into Photoshop a little bit later to add some of these hand-drawn scribbles. But if you want to do something like this where it looks like it's tearing paper, you guys could always just print out a frame of the video on an actual printer, record a piece of paper, draw on it, tear into it, take that picture and put it back into your computer. There's many ways to be able to kind of finesse the system. Pop in, we have this next scene transition here. We have a freeze frame. As you can see, the masking goes into our normal shot here. And then we have one shot in the background and it sort of duplicates in all these different shots in the background. Now to be able to do something like this, there's a few things that they could have done. A, they could have been shooting this on motion control. You have your camera on some sort of rig that is gonna create the same movement twice. So if you have the camera on some sort of crane that's gonna do this panning motion, you can get one shot of him performing it in the foreground. And then what you can do is you can pause the song you can make the camera do that exact same motion and you can have him perform in the background here. So you have one shot, again, of him just performing in the foreground with the exact same camera movement. And then you have a second shot of the exact same camera movement, but him in the background. And then you can use masking to combine these two shots into one. So without doing the motion control route, which I just mentioned, because again, you'd have to have some sort of motion control device to be able to create the same camera movement twice. Let's try and finesse it and see if we can do it just using masking. So I'm going to take the exact same shot we used at the beginning here, and I'm going to hold down alt and duplicate it. So just drag it up and I'm just going to drag the shot out to try and find if I can have this guy a little bit further from the camera. So let's drag this all the way out, try and find a shot maybe where he's a little bit further back. So maybe like here, I'll control K and just cut that out. Let's go back to the beginning and drag him in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and freeze frame, rotoscope, whatever it is you wanna do. So you wanna do just the freeze frame method. Very simple, just right click, add frame hold, drag here to make sure that's frozen, and then go ahead and mask. So select it, grab your pen tool and your effect controls under opacity. And I'll just create a simple little mask around him here. There we go. So now we have him masked out. So again, we have this darker background. It's going to help to blend this. So I'll select this layer and let's maybe have it start. Let's maybe have it start as he moves over. So we'll have it pop in right here. And we're also going to do it so that it looks like he's behind our main foreground. So here's our foreground. Here's our background layer to place it behind. We're going to control K this bottom part here. So this is our foreground and we're gonna mask that as well. So let's hide this for now, select this, and we'll go ahead and mask this. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just draw a little mask around him. Background goes away. To bring the background back, hold down Alt, drag this down, and just delete the mask off the bottom part. To break down the layers for you, if we hide everything, we have isolated foreground, we have normal footage for the background, and then on the top, we have what we wanna put in the background. So. Let's take the isolated foreground layer here and just put it in a layer above our background. So now if we grab our background layer here, you see I can move it and it's gonna look like it's coming out from behind the foreground. So essentially what I can do now is I can kind of add a keyframe to add some motion into this. So keyframe position scale, drag a bit, and as he kind of moves to the left, we'll just make a move to the left as well. 
There you go. Happens a little quick. So let's drag that keyframe out. Maybe we'll hold down and right click on them. Temporal, temporal interpolation ease in. So that's doing it the freeze frame method. If you want this to have motion, like in the original music video, you're going to have to rotoscope. But before we rotoscope, let's just say maybe you want to add a little duplication onto this. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just make this move a bit faster. And then we'll hold down Alt, duplicate the background part again here. And for this background part, all you need to do here is just take this keyframe and just move it. So now you're going to see, there you go. Now you have two in the background. And of course, if you time it right, you can create something very similar where you just have this looping version of a person popping out from behind the mask like they did in that scene. There's also one more issue. You see, as we drag here, the mask is getting a little messed up. That's because he's moving. So we need to adjust the mask for that. So we'll select the top layer, which is our foreground isolated. And you see our mask. Let's just keyframe the mask path and we'll just do a rough little fix of this. So you see where this kind of part messes up, select it, and we'll just fix it. Let's move to the end here and then fix the mask one more time. If you want, you can also feather this up a tiny bit. You see how this edge is a little dark. We'll feather that just to blend that a bit better. Now, if you want to have a moving in the background, not just this frozen image, again, you can use After Effects to rotoscope, or let's try and finesse it because we have this darker background. It's easier to blend. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to frame hold options and just uncheck this to remove the frame hold. Now, as we play this, check that out. You'll see we have the movement, but the mask is just a little iffy. And that's where rotoscoping will really help you. But since we have that darker background here, we can really blend. We might be able to just use Adobe Premiere to fix some of those issues. So let's go to our mask here and just keyframe it for our background part here. Let's scroll a bit and then just grab the mask and fix it. And you'll see this background blending a tiny bit. Again, we can feather. So it just goes to show what you could do with Premiere with no rotoscoping, as long as the background is easily blended. If you have this darker background, you can do it. If not, what I would do is I would right click, replace this with After Effects Composition, and I would rotoscope it. If you wanna see a rotoscoping tutorial to make that easier for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link down below. We have a full step-by-step -step guide, just like the data moshing. Being able to have these moving clones in the background, being able to control the foreground, and then again, adding these flashy little pop-in effects. And now I wanna show you how we can use Photoshop to manipulate some of our little pictures that we're gonna be popping in here. And again, you can use the pop-in transition techniques, which we've been showing you earlier to mix in with this, or you can just have it flash on the screen like they did in the video. So let's kind of create this cool distorted black and white um, look here. And it's actually very easy. Again, you can use a photo with what you took on set, or if you wanna use it from video footage, maybe like right here, we wanna just kind of freeze frame this part. We can click this little export frame button, which is on our video player. So click that. I'm going to save this as a JPEG and I'll put this in the folder that we've been working out of here. So here, and I also wanna mention if you don't have Photoshop for any reason, but you do have After Effects, um, you can also do Liquify within After Effects. That's the tool we're gonna to do to all, that's the tool we're gonna to use to ultimately do this. So you can do it in After Effects, but I'm gonna show you in Photoshop because we're gonna use Photoshop to create some of the later effects after this to our folder here and just open up the screenshot that we just grabbed. So in Photoshop with our image here, we can select it. It's actually just right click it and layer from background here. So we have it in a layer. It's not a background frozen layer. Now let's go up to filter and we'll go to liquify. In this liquify scene, it's super similar to After Effects. Um, you can grab your brush size here and we can create this kind of distorted whatever you want to do here. You guys can get creative with this. It kind of looks horrifying, but I think that's okay for now. We'll do it in Premiere. It's a little easier. We'll just save as and we'll put it in the exact same folder. We'll just name this one Liquid. Hop back into Premiere. Hop back into that folder and just drag it right where you grab the screenshot. And you'll see if you match it up correctly, it's going to do that same pop in. So we play. There you go. Distorts. You guys can hold that as long as you want. Say you want to add black and white. Again, theirs was a little more artsy and the composition of it looked better. Mine just looks like horrifying what I added here, but, but it's the exact same technique if you're trying to do it yourself. Add black and white onto here. So before I show you how to do this cool um, mouth pop effect here, as well as the fire in the mouth that you see here, I just want to touch on one more thing in Photoshop. I want to touch on, I want to talk about how we can create some cool little hand-drawn animation stuff like this using Photoshop. And it's very simple. We're going to do a very similar technique to what we did to bring the footage from um, Adobe Premiere into Photoshop. So let's pop into Photoshop. And instead of taking the screenshot like we did last time, let's just select the clip where we want to add a little hand-drawn animation. So right here, we'll Control-C to copy it. 
and I'm gonna go to file new sequence and just click OK this is my normal 1080p 24 frame sequence and let's just paste that little segment in here so about six seconds that's fine I'm gonna go up to file export and we're gonna render this here and then bring that clip into Photoshop for the animation so I'll save it in the exact same folder here export it and this is six seconds so it'll literally take less than six seconds to export pop into Photoshop and I hate I'm sick of seeing this so we'll delete that let's go to file open and let's bring in this sequence 2 that we just exported and click open since we opened a video into Photoshop you'll see we now have this timeline which we can drag through the video so if you want to add a little bit of hand-drawn looking animation on top of this what you can do is you see this bottom right button let's create a new layer and this is the new layer you'll see it's inner timeline but it's after our footage so let's take this let's take this new layer here and drag it above video group one so now you see it in a layer above so take that layer two and just drag it so that it's over top of our footage now what I like to do is I like to zoom in here and I like to just cut out frame by frame this layer if you click page up and page down you'll be able to move frame by frame I think to be able to have that shortcut you may have to just click this option and um, enable timeline shortcut key so make sure that's checked to be able to get page up and page down working if not you could always just move this frame by frame but I recommend using the uh, shortcuts it's just a lot easier so what I do here is I'll move one frame and I'll just click this scissor button so click and then I'll repeat that for as long as this video is so move one frame click move one frame and I'll do that until the video ends right there and then we can delete the excess so moving back and again using your zoom to be able to navigate on our first layer make sure you select it here and now we can just go to our brushes and let's just create some cool hand-drawn animation over top of this and of course there's a lot of built-in um, cool media brushes if you click in the top left here you have your general dry wet special effects brushes so let's go to dry media you have your pencil hard so I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this one here this is the ultimate charcoal pencil Let's go ahead and make this white so it can pop a little bit more and then we're just going to draw if you guys have a drawing tablet I'm gonna leave a link below if you want to use the one I use since this is a six second video I'm just gonna use my mouse but of course I always recommend that you guys use a drawing tablet just do some little hand-drawn stuff here and the reason why I'm not using After Effects and all the line effects is because you can use your own custom brushes in Photoshop here and I grab one of these real oils if I draw something like that you can see how I can blend it so that's the benefit of being able to use different brushes and that's why I choose Photoshop to be able to do this so once you've created whatever you want to add here you're just gonna to have to click page down and just do it again on this next layer here that's what's gonna give it this sort of hand-drawn poppy animation that we're trying to get and I'm pretty much just scribbling here but you get the point once this is finished whatever you want to add in here once you have what you want you go up to file you go to export and you go to render video so not export as not save as you make sure you render video drawings and we're gonna go ahead and put this in the same folder here quick time that's fine animation high quality that's fine we'll go and click render here it is drawings drag that into here and there you go so now you have your little hand-drawn drawings are going pretty quick if you want to slow down the animation instead of going every frame when you're cutting out that layer you could cut up every other frame so that's just a quick little tip you don't want it to be as crazy as what I added in here but you can see if we zoom in that it's hand-drawn it kind of looks paintish you can use the pencil pencil presets whatever you guys want so let's go ahead and try that mouth bouncing effect now we did something similar where we had the bulging where we had these bulging eyes I made a tutorial on that it was in my Eminem juice world Godzilla giant tutorial that I made um, and in that tutorial I use after effects to track the eyes and so that it followed the face let's try and do something in Adobe Premiere with the mouth and of course you could use after effects if you want to fully track so we may hop into after effects but let's just see what we can do with this video here so what I'm gonna do if we play this out first off we want to be a little bit closer in so I'll just scale this in and I'll kind of go to the face here what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold down alt and just click and drag up to make a duplication in a video layer above what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mask it like we've been doing for everything else so in our opacity and our effect controls for this layer just click this little pen tool and we'll draw around the mouth so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select my mouth layer the top layer keyframe my mask path and I'm just going to kind of make a little rough track of this mask following the mouth so now that we have this rough track across the mouth here 
just using some keyframes in Adobe Premiere. Let's go ahead and just add a little bit of flair into this. So whenever he pronounces a word like here, we're going to go ahead and take this. So what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe some of the scale here. So go to the beginning, keyframe our position and scale, move to where he's about to say a word, and we can click these little two dots. So that starts here, right when he pronounces a word, we scale up and we position down. So there you go, you see it kind of grow. And if you wanted to blend a bit, you just put up the feather, and maybe lower the mask expansion a tiny bit just to get that to blend. So you'll see it kind of pop out. Want it to go back to normal, you can lower the values. Now. So there you go, if you want it to pop more, let's make a cut here so we can see these keyframes a little better. Let's go to where it first grows. So right here, you can customize this if you want it to really pop towards the camera if you want to smooth out those keyframes make the animation a little better again you select them right click temporal interpolation and you can add that easy ease so if you repeat that process you can get something very similar this is just to show you what the power of after effects can really do to help you in this situation instead of having to do it manually in adobe premiere we now have after effects trackers you have motion trackers there's a bunch of different ways that you can do to make this process a lot easier and look a lot better so instead of having to position the scale maybe you guys want to add a little bulge effect that's what we use in the eyes for that godzilla tutorial you guys can just place it on the mouth here you can keyframe that. Hopefully all of you who are only using Premiere, you look into After Effects. It's a great tool to have on top of it. And again, it makes your life easier. If you're getting serious into it as a hobby or side hustle career, whatever it is, definitely start looking into After Effects. We have tons of After Effects tutorials as well. It's always great to show things in Adobe Premiere. A lot of these pop in and out effects, a lot of these different styles like the hand-drawn animation, some of the cool things you can do using built-in things in Premiere, mixing mediums like photography and video. And you always know you're gonna get a cool, interesting video whenever anyone in the ASAP Mob posts. So shout out to them, shout out to the creative team behind it. They're always doing cool stuff always pushing the limits and trying to mix new things. If you guys did enjoy this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, check out the other videos I made um, that are similar to this. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.